What's up, guys? This is Matt the Misfit. Welcome back to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I am back after a week hiatus. I think it, I think it was a week, week or two. I don't know. Um, uh, little news, uh, brief, I guess. I'm no longer going to be reviewing Raw and SmackDown on the show. Um, just, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm probably not going to cover uh, Raw or SmackDown. I might not even cover NXT. NXT's dead. Uh, why bother? But I will continue to cover AEW on this show. I will ch- talk about New Japan uh, later this week. Because there's some stuff I want to talk about there with the Russell Grand. I guess still watch Russ, Russell Grand Slam back too. I saw night one. I enjoyed what they what they had there. Uh, they showcased the women of stardom, which was great. I'll I'll talk about that uh, later on this week. This is my review of one of the best wrestling shows of the year, probably the best wrestling show in the last ten years, in my opinion. AEW's All Out 2021. What a flipping show! Uh, I ordered this through Fight TV. Thank God I did because of fuck Bleacher Report. They suck ass. They just, they didn't even get back to me until the end, until the day after the show aired. I'm like, what the fuck? So that's frankly, hopefully going forward, uh, Fight TV carries the AEW pay-per-views in the United States too. I know they're usually, they were usually international, but it was like, I think during SmackDown they announced that All Out was going to be on Fight TV worldwide, so that's gonna be great. That was great. I hope they continue to do that for a full year. Um, this show is great. Uh, if you guys want to follow me, follow me at Matt the Misfit on on uh, Twitter, spelled Miz because I can't. I got the. I have to figure out how to get Misfit because I'm kind of mad about that. Um, and then you can follow you can follow my social medias. Links will be in the description, hopefully. I don't know, maybe if I forget. I don't know. Uh, but, damn, what a show. We had two, we had three great debuts. Oh, four great debuts. One surprise debut that didn't see coming. Three we kind of knew was coming. One I wasn't so sure about. Okay, two I kind of kind of figured was going to happen. One I wasn't so sure about. Um, But, you know. Let's let's get into the show here. Let's let's talk about, and we'll talk about some of the news that comes around surrounding some of these debuts as we get to the segment. So, you know, there's that. Uh, like I said, if you like, subscribe, do the thing. Um, check out some of my good friends there. Shout out to Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam dot net for and Sean Rossap. Uh, for covering two of the best wrestling stories of the year with CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, now Bryan Danielson, coming to AEW, coming back to wrestling. CM Punk, we'll get to him. He had a great match with Darby Allin. Uh, Bryan Danielson is here. Adam Cole is here. John Moxley is going to want, apparently wants to die on, on Dynamite tomorrow uh, with Minoru Suzuki. Or tonight, if you re- if if it, whenever di- when I decided to, or this, or he would have already died. I don't know when this is going up. <laughs> uh, Christian and Kenny had an okay main event. Didn't really care about it. Uh, Jericho, MJF was pretty good. Um, match of the night goes to the insane cage match between the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers. Wow. That match is on my top 15 matches of 2021. Um, it's not my favorite match of the year. My favorite match of the year still goes goes to the stardom match. But but All Out is my favorite show of the year. It, it somehow surpassed Wrestle Kingdom 15. I don't know how that was going to happen. That was insane that that's going to happen. That, that happened. I mean, but yeah. I got my, my CM Punk shirt here. Um, I ordered CM Punk's new shirt on uh, Pro Wrestling, or was it, no, I got from Shop w, AEW Shop, Shop AEW.com. It's one of those two. Um, so let's get into the show here. We got, we got, uh, we're going to start off with a buy-in match. Um, 
Originally, it was supposed to be the Casino Battle Royale, uh, Women's Casino Battle Royale, Battle Royale, but uh, due to travel issues, that's what I was understood. It was going to be uh, Pack and versus Andrade. A match I was actually looking forward to was pushed back to Rampage this week. So uh, they had to move a car or something off the off the main off the buy end. So they moved the, the Women's Battle Royale from the buy end to the main show. They put a, I believe it was a, a ten man tag match. Uh, it's the which saw the Hardy family office take on. Uh, consisted of Angelico, Jack Evans, Isaiah, Cassidy, Mark Quinn, and Big Money Matt Hardy taking on best friends Chuck Taylor, freshly squeezed one Cassidy Wheeler Yuta, who's filling in for Trent right now, who's out with the neck injury. Uh, after I believe he had neck surgery, uh, and the Jungle uh, Express, Jungle Express, Jurassic Express. Why does it say Jungle Express? Who writes this? I'm reading off of AEW's. Uh, I'm I'm reading off of AEW's Twitter, uh, not Twitter, but uh, website. It should. It says Jungle Express. It's Jurassic Express, which is Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus with Marco Stunt. Pretty okay match. Um, baby faces win here. Uh, Marco Stunt. Are not Marco Stunt on this match. Jungle Boy and Jurassic Express is over like like Rover. They're over with the Chicago crowd, um, as like I say, like they were going to be. Um, I see Jungle Boy eventually taking that TNT Championship off of Miro. We'll get to Miro in a little bit because he's doing great stuff. I enjoyed this match for what it was. Helped to get the crowd a little bit hyped. Not that they weren't hyped before, uh, but. But I believe Jungle Boy lagged, lagged, basically the match came down to uh, Jungle Boy and Angelico. Jungle Boy locked in the snare trap, which is a great finishing maneuver, by the way. On on Angelico, on Angelico tapped him out for the win. After the match, uh, the uh, after the match, I'm I'm. I'm like, you know, mind frozen. Anyways, after the match, um, Orange Cassidy, I can't remember his name, I don't know why, Orange Cassidy uh, was celebrating in the ring. Then all of a sudden, uh, Har- Hardy Alf- Hardy's crew attacks uh, dress, uh, Orange Cassidy, Orange Cassidy, and uh, tries to get some help. Then comes the return of the Butcher, who's been out. I don't know how long how the Butcher's now been out, but uh, Butcher and the Blade are back together. I would love to see, and I, saw, and I saw this on Twitter. I believe this was, somebody asked Malachi Black this about a faction with the House of Black, which I think is going to be a real thing. And he wants Abaddon, Butcher, and the Blade to be a part of uh, uh, the House of Black. I like that idea. That sounds pretty good. But yeah, so basically the baby faces stand tall. And I gets the crowd going for the rest of the night. Oh boy, they're in for a night. Um uh before we get before that we had a Dan Lambert in the sky box with um three of the three UFC fighters. I'm not gonna pretend like I know who they are who they are because I don't watch UFC. I'm sorry. But he also had men of the year with Scorpio Sky and all Ego Ethan Page up there. Basically calling out anybody that can beat somebody's ass. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, JR comes out with the commentary. Then we start to go into the main show, which starts off with the TNT Championship match. Uh, the Redeemer. Miro defending the TNT Championship against Eddie Kingston. This is a great match. This is probably Eddie Kingston's best match since coming into AEW, in my opinion. I like Eddie Kingston. I do, and I love Eddie Kingston like everybody else, but I did like Eddie Kingston, and Eddie Kingston is great. Miro is on another level. I'm so glad he's doing much better than he was in WWE. Uh, he started off in AEW very poorly. I didn't like what he was doing with the whole uh, best man shit. That was stupid. Um, but since he's moved away from that, this this uh, God's favorite champion thing is fantastic. Um, though... 
uh, I'm on Rampage. I was gonna I was gonna talk about this. I didn't get to talk about. Uh, uh, I haven't actually covered a lot of of wrestling this week. Uh, the past few weeks, I didn't even get a chance to re- to cover CM Punk's debut. So, but um, but last but we, the night before or the two nights before on Rampage, uh, they had to redeem the nut these nuts thing, and. Then, <laughs> And so basically, well, I'll, I'll get to that here. So, uh, strong match. Both these two kicking the hell out of each other. Uh, main po- point of this match is the turnbuckle spot. Um, Miro, uh, uh, the, the, one of the other main points of this match is, is the neck. Uh, Eddie Kingston is going for chops and, and, uh, anything that will do have to, has to do with the neck. Eddie Kingston went for it. Uh, which is smart. I love that. Um, that's that's great psychology there. Um, so that happened. Uh, then one of my other uh, the other spot they went for was the table, not the table spot, the uh, the turnbuckle spot, which people fucking shat on the referee. I don't blame them. The referee is an asshole. Um, so so Eddie Kingston. So they so Miro had Eddie Kingston in for a German suplex. Eddie was holding on to the turnbuckle, pulled off the turnbuckle pad. Don't know if the, it may have been unintentional that it happened. Uh, and then he tried to use the turnbuckle uh, pad. Eddie Kingston got the his finishing maneuver. I don't remember what it's called. He had he hit the finishing maneuver. He calls it. What does he call it? What does he call that? Let me see. Let me see. I'm doing this live here, so I know what it, so I know what the answer is here. Eddie Kingston finisher. What does he call it? He calls it something, and I can't. I, uh, I just gonna, it's gonna, it's, I'm gonna hate myself for this later. Hmm. Then I oh well, I'll, I'll think about it later. But he, he tried to, he hit it. Referee is too busy trying to put the turnbuckle pad back on there or whatever he was doing because the camera didn't pick it up what he was doing. Uh, but uh, people sh- people hated it because the whole thing with the referee, uh, Ed Kingston didn't get, didn't get the three. Which, But in a way, it was smart because it makes you think well, when Ed Kingston eventually wins that championship, which I think... If they don't put the title on Jungle Boy, I think they're going to do this match again in in Queens at Grand Slam, and I think Eddie Kingston's going to win the championship there. I mean, isn't he from New York? Isn't he from Queens? I think he's from Yonkers, but... Yeah, he's from Yonkers, New York, but that's great. I like that. Um, so, Eddie Kingston tried to, tries to run his, his head in the turnbuckle, uh, runs Miro's head in the turnbuckle. Referee blocks it. Referee doesn't see it. Low blow from from Miro hitting the the matcha kick. I call it the matcha kick. I don't know what he calls it now. And he, then what he used to call the um the what the fuck did he used to call that? What the hell did he used to call that? The accolade. He used to call that the accolade. Now he calls it the game over. Um, it's over for Eddie Kingston. Uh, Miro retains the in, the AT and T Championship. I think they're gonna redo. They're do, gonna do this match again because Miro cheated. Um, I normally I like when AEW doesn't do rematches when they're garnered. Uh, when they're when they when he calls for it, <laughs> Miro versus Eddie Kingston. Calls for a rematch because Miro cheated to retain the championship. Um, this is I, I know I'll get to that later. Um, but one of my one of my favorite things is they had a, a redeem these nuts uh, shirt that had that Eddie Kingston somehow made trend all Friday after all Friday night after Rampage. Um, <laughs> Miro says, "Ask and you shall receive," or, or something. These nuts have been redeemed. And then Lana, 
Lana says, I'll redeem your nuts when you get home. I'm like, no, you cannot say that. On, oh. I'm like, Jesus. Oh, man. I really do hope she comes in because I think I want to see that act in AEW and see how that works. But that should be good. Um, next up, we had John Moxley versus New Japan's uh, Sasha, uh, Kojima. Really, well, it's a match. Um, it's, again, it's not the match we were supposed to get. We were supposed to get John Moxley, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, unfortunately, with COVID stuff going on. Um, uh, New Japan needed uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi for their Grand Slam show uh, this past weekend, so uh, which I believe was in MetLife Dome. I believe so. He, and he took on, I think he took on Kota Ibushi, uh, defending the United States title. Um, so we didn't get uh, Tanahashi versus um, Moxley. We're, I think we are going to eventually get that, just not now. But this was a pretty good match. Um, pretty decent. Uh, Moxley came out wearing a GCW hoodie. Because uh, if those of you don't know, night before he went, he showed up at a GCW show, beat Matt Cardona for the GCW championship, and now Nick Gage and G and and John Moxley are going to fight in a death match for the GCW championship. I believe it's October 9th. Um, if you guys want to see that, go ahead. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to. Maybe I don't know. If you guys want me to talk about that match in particular, let me know. Um, good match with these between these two. Um, hard hitting affair. Uh, basically, t main point of this match is takes two uh, paradigm shifts for the win. Uh, I know Kojima wasn't going to win this match. He didn't really need to. Um, Moxie was going to win anyway, so there's that. Um, so they had a great match. Then, and then one of the shockers of the day, um, uh, something I didn't see coming. No one predicted he was going to show up. Freaking more Minoru Suzuki's music hits. He comes out and the place loses the shit. I lost my shit. Grandpa murderer, murder grandpa, whatever you want to call him. Comes out. Moxley can't believe it. They, I remember their match from the New Beginnings last year, before the pandemic, before everything started shutting down. Um, they had a match in Osaka. It was for the New Beginning show. Was, I believe it was their second show after their second pay per view. I don't know what they they don't call them pay per views, but they call them special event shows after Wrestle Kingdom fourteen. And oh my God, they had one of my favorite matches of the year. I'm glad they're going to be running this back in AEW. Moxley and and Suzuki beat the shit out of each other as they would, uh, laughing each, laughing it off. Uh, then Mo then Suzuki goes behind, reverses into a sleeper, then hits the Gotch pile driver, Gotch style pile driver, and we're getting that match on Wednesday or tomorrow or, or tomorrow tonight if you're watching this. Uh, review tonight I want to if you're watching this review on Wednesday then it's tonight if you're watching this review on Thursday then this match has already happened but that should, should be good uh, next up we got a next up uh, I believe there's I believe I'm trying to okay next up we have the women's uh, world title match between uh, women's world champion Dr. Britt Baker DMD uh, with Rebby Rebby not Rebel and Jamie Hayter versus the galaxy's greatest alien Chris Antler with Orange Cassidy. It was a fine match. Um, I wasn't, like, I'm not going all the way saying it's the best women's match of the show. I don't really care very much about that. Uh, but it was, a, it was a pretty good match. Um, uh, I thought it was pretty good. D, uh, Britt Baker basically obviously won with the, with the lock jaw. Um, and it was a pretty good match. Let's see what we got here. Orange Cassidy just yeah, out there, but uh, I don't. I don't think they got. I missed some of the match. There was a really scary spot with a with a superplex. Um, a scary spot with a superplex between Britt Baker and Chris Statlander. Thankfully, they're all right. Um, 
So yeah, so Britt Baker is getting ready to build her stuff up for her next challenger, which we'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, once we go to the next thing, which is a backstage promo with Andrade El Elo, uh, with Alex Marvez. Marvez asked Andrade had uh, if Andrade had caused Pax travel issues. Andrade said that he was here to fight and went and canceled Pax flight. I guess maybe they're used as a storyline. I don't know. Um, he said this Friday, this Friday, he'll take on Pack at Rampage. So there's that. Looking forward to that. That should be good. Then, I don't know if I can do this match justice talking about it. Probably one of the best matches of the year. One of my favorite Steel Cage matches of the year. Not my favorite Steel Cage match. My favorite Steel Cage match ever is still going to be Bret Hart, Owen Hart from SummerSlam. But we have the AEW women, AEW women, AEW World Tag Team titles on the line in a steel cage match. The Young Bucks defending against the Lucha Brothers, Penta El Zero Miedo, Penta El Zero Miedo, and Ray Phoenix with Alex. I can't. I'm not going to pretend like I'm doing a pronounce his name. Great entrance by uh by the Lucha Brothers. A WrestleMania like entrance, but this match. Don Callis obviously is on commentary. This match is just... I can't even do it justice. Some of the highlights of this match. Um, he had... Uh, freaking Brandon Cutler threw in a, a shoe, a bag with a shoe in it that had thumbtacks on it. Uh, super kicked. Well, we'll get to that spot because that spot seems something. Uh, we have the Young Bucks try to cheat multiple times and it's uh, there an AEW steel cages are a little different than WWE your standard WWE steel cage um like still the entire cage goes around the ring including the floor but but like but it's a little taller so it's really frightening to come off the top of that thing and then we had let's see but you know the 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 Young Bucks try to do some cool stuff. Uh, I, can't, I can't. Like I said, I'm speechless when I'm talking about this match. Um, uh, we have the Young Bucks try to rip off the masks of Phoenix and Penta, um, which didn't work all the way at least. Um, both both Penta and Ray are, are... I'm not sure if Ray Phoenix was bleeding, but I know Penta was mo a lot. Um, then we got that shoe spot. With uh with the thumbtacks on the shoe, um, uh, Bucks went for the for, for the super kick. Ray Phoenix, uh, Penta got in front of Ray Phoenix to stop it. Took the brunt of the kick. Same with his brother. We had a, a multiple false finishes. Um, we had a package pile driver assist, uh, almost for the wind. We seen we had a insane dive from the top rope from, um. Not top rope from the top of the cage from Ray Phoenix onto onto Penta and the and the Bucks, um, and assisted. I think it was assisted pack a power drive for the wind. Uh, this match is just incredible. New AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Lucha Brothers. I'm actually glad the Lucha Brothers are the tag team champions. Um, the, it's about time. They are one of the best tag teams in the world. So is the Young Bucks. This is tag team. This is that's why I love tag team wrestling. AEW makes me love tag team wrestling. WWE makes me hate tag team wrestling. One of the best tag matches of the year. One of the best matches of the year. One of the best steel cage matches of the year. Probably the best one. It's it's just insane. Incredible match. Hats hats off to all four guys in, in, involved. Um, and then I'm thinking they're gonna run. Penta. And Phoenix versus Proud and Powerful at the Queen Show in, in in later on this month. So that should be, oh man, I am excited. I love wrestling. There's that. Of course, after the match, we saw Pentagon. I, I'm I'm assuming that was his fam, his kids. That he was hugging and his wife. I'm not sure. But I'm assuming that's what it was. 
So there's that. Then we had the Women's Conceito Battle Royale, which was actually pretty fun. Participants, participants included Abaddon, Anna J, Big Swole, Di Diamante, Imi Sakura, Hikaru Shida, Jade Cargill, ha Jamie Hayter, Kira Hogan, Kaylee King, Kaylin King, I think it was her name, Layla Hirsch, Nala Rose, Penelope Ford, Red Rebel, Red Velvet, Riho, Sky Blue, Ty Conti, The Bunny, Thunder Rosa, and a Mystery Part. Uh, mystery Intro. Uh, mystery Intro. In what is new because uh, Julia Hart on Dark the following day, the day before, was taken out by Penelope Ford and the Bunny, so she could. So there was a new spot open for that. All right. So the first suit, which I believe was, if I wanna, I wanna, I wanna actually put get this correctly because I don't wanna. I want to get this correctly before, because uh, I don't wanna screw this up. So, so let me. I'll say, okay, so the clubs in this order was Hikaru Shida, Sky Blue, Emi Sakura, uh, who, uh, the bunny, and Abaddon. So that was the first suit, the second suit of diamonds. Um, was the diamonds. The first suit was the clubs. The second suit was the diamonds, uh, which is Anna J, Kira Hogan, uh, Kayla King, Diamante, Nyla Rose. Then we had the hearts, which was Thunder Rosa, Penelope Ford, Rear. Riho, I not Riho, really, really, Riho, Jamie Hader, Big Swole, Spades, whereas Ty Conti, Red Velvet, Layla Hirsch, Jade Cargill, and Rebel. Uh, we'll get to the Joker injury in a, in a second. Um, uh, let's see. So, so I'm not gonna go through everyone who got eliminated, um, but but we got the Joker. It was Rio, Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho comes out. And a loud reacts, loud ovation, um, and and it came down to uh, Ruby, Ru Ru Ruby, right? Ruby Soho, Nyla Rose, and Thunder Rosa. Now Thunder Rosa eliminated Nyla Rose by herself in the final two, which is a match I can't wait to see one on one. Thunder Rosa, uh, Ru Ruby Soho. Believe it or not, these two were my favorites to win this match. If Ruby Soho wasn't in this battle royal, it was going to be Thunder Rosa. If Ruby Soho wasn't in this battle royal, Ruby Soho was going to win. So I'm glad she won. She's here. Uh, she said in the in the in the in the media scrum that no one's ever chanted her name before. So this is different. This is new. She's excited. Um, she's free. She's free to do be herself. They're gonna. I'm so glad that she's in the AEW. She'll be in a company that will actually you know care about her <laughs> like WWE just like let her go they didn't give a shit they just let her go what's WWE's loss is AEW's gain but I'm not going to spend too much of my time on this so I will so in the future uh if future AEW show it will be Ruby Soho versus Britt Baker for the AEW Women's Championship. Ruby Soho will be on Dynamite uh, tomorrow or tonight, or if you are or tomorrow, or if you're watching this tomorrow uh, Wednesday, and it's tonight. If you're watching this on Thursday, then it already happened. And we and and if you're and if you're watching this on Thursday, we probably already know when this match is happening. Then we had MJF. Uh, versus Chris Jericho in the final fight. If Chris Jericho loses, uh, Jericho must retire. I, I originally it was if Jericho loses, he can never wrestle again. Now it's they they somewhere along the lines so they changed it to he can never wrestle in AEW again. I don't know where that where they changed that, but um, I missed first few minutes of this match, so I can only go off of what I saw. Um, but we're going to go to the end of the fat last five minutes of this match here. Um, so, so, referee's distracted uh, by, I think it's Wardlow, who has helped, who was, who was trying to, who came, who out comes Jake Hager to fight off 
uh, MJ and I MJF fight off Wardlow. Referee's distracted, so MJF hits Jericho with with the baseball bat that Jericho calls Floyd. Uh, goes to the pin one, two, three. Referee doesn't see that Jericho's foot is on the bottom rope. People lose are pissed. Which I like. Oh my god, this place is gonna riot before even we get to the CM Punk match. <laughs> so, so then another referee comes down, uh, tells, oh, I can't forget, uh, Aubrey Hepburn, uh, Audrey Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn, Audrey Edwards. I, I was I was watching a video earlier about Audrey Hepburn. Sorry. Um. Uh, that Jericho's foot was on the bottom rope. Try to convince, try to tell him over and over, her over and over again that the, the foot was on the bottom rope. So they restart the match. Jericho gets almost again, almost beat him. Uh, MJF almost beat him again. Jericho rolls him over the walls of Jericho. MJF taps out. Uh, Jericho wins. That was kind of, I knew that was going to happen. We all knew Jericho was going to win. Uh, would have been nice to see MJF win win here. Yes. My only issue I have with this match is why did they do this match two weeks ago on Dynamite? Or two two or three weeks ago on Dynamite. Why did they do this match? The the fifth labor on a dynamite instead of saving it for the pay per view. That just makes that just looks dumb. I hated that. MJF will be fine. Jericho was not going to go. Jericho was not going to retire. Jericho said multiple times that if, when he retires, he's not going to tell anybody. He's not going to have a big celebration for it. Not a big event. He's just going to have a match, retire. Who, who does that remind me of? Who quietly retired from the ring? Okay, this may not be a big, big, like, like a big, you know, um, thing. But when AJ Lee retired, she didn't make a big deal about it. She just quietly retired from the ring and then left. So there's that. Uh, Inner, Inner Circle comes out to celebrate with Jericho. There's that. Then, match that I was looking forward to the most on this entire show, CM Punk, Darby Allen. I cannot believe I'm saying I'm, I'm reviewing the CM Punk match. This is insane. Uh, CM Punk, uh, Darby comes out and accompanied by, by Sting. Um, Sting kept his word. He said he's going to come out, walk out with Darby, fist pump him, walk walk to the back. That's exactly what happened. CM, CM Punk comes out wearing tights, which is I'm going to try to get used to. Maybe he goes back to the trunks. Maybe he wants to wants to uh, shake it up a little bit, uh, look, make it look you know be a little different. Who knows? Um, but, but when I say CM Punk looks like he's, CM Punk looks like he never left the ring. Like he still can go. If anyone doubted that this man can't, this is old and he's can't, and he's like washed up, proved you wrong last, uh, not last night, but proved you wrong on Sunday that he can still go with the best of them. And Darby Allen was the perfect opponent for Punk. A p- perfect first opponent back for Punk. Darby sold his ass off, made Punk look like a million bucks. Um, and Darby, and Punk made Darby leave look like a million bucks. Darby loses nothing by losing to CM Punk. So, uh, it's the club in town. This happened. Some great stuff. Great back and forth. Call and elbow tie up. They, paid, they did an homage to. Uh, I don't remember the actual show, the actual event. It was either a Raw or it was a pay-per-view. One of those shows. But it was, a, and I didn't know this until, um, until after it was pointed out to me, that they paid homage to uh, Bret Hart and one, two, three kid, the lockup and, and whatnot. The whole sequence was an homage to what Bret Hart and, and one, two, three kid did. Um, and there was also no homage to the Cena punk match from Money in the Bank, which is the GTS to the outside. A GTS and then Punk the Dobby falls out of the out of the outside. Punk didn't make, take very much big bumps yet, but he was probably getting his feet wet. 
And you say one top rope maneuver. Um, but Darby, you know, he hit the, he, he basically Punk's greatest hits. He had the, uh, he, he hit the, the, the higher running knee. He hit the, he hit a, a tilt wall backbreaker. Uh, he took the Darby, Darby out of the suicide dive. He took Darby. Oh, man, Darby is like wanting to kill himself. This is incredible. So Darby, so, so there was an Irish whip that Punk did to Darby. Darby, I don't know if he moved, if he, but he got flung into the, the ring post. Bam. Like, boom. It was, it was insane. Uh, it was like it killed him. Uh, so we had Torto, Tilt the Backbreaker. We had Octopus st- Stretch and cool stuff like that. One of my favorite spots in the match. Well, we'll get, well, before we get to the coffin drop pot spot, um, Darby goes for the, uh, uh, so I think it was either a, it was a somersault from the top rope to the outside, uh, knocks Punk out, or takes Punk out, gets back in the ring, does the coffin drop, Punk sits up like the Undertaker and laughs. It was pretty funny. Um, and then but Punk, um, ring rust. I'm gonna, I want to use that as, 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 as the story there. Ring rust a little bit. Uh, Darby catches him, rolls him over for the for the two. Uh, he also hits a code red early on in the match, uh, which is pretty freaking cool. Hits the, uh, he had a GTS, but Darby falls out of the ring. Um, like I said, an homage to when Punk hit GTS, hit the GTS and Cena. Cena rolled out, fall that fell out of the ring at uh, Money in the Bank a few years ago, uh, ten years ago. Yeah, imagine that. It was ten years ago. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, when my, uh, Darby went, goes for the, goes for the poison Rana. Punk counters that into the GTS for the three count. CM Punk wins his first match back. He looks great. Seven years, he's been gone for seven years, but it doesn't look like he's been gone that long. Sting comes out, shakes, uh, Punk's hand. Helps Darby up. Punk shakes Darby's hand. So, so for people saying Darby should need the win, I don't know why I'm looking over here. My camera's not over. Sorry. I'm used to, I'm used to, my camera's usually over here. I don't know why. My bad. My camera's over here. I usually, my camera's are usually over here. <laughs> for the people who say Darby needs to lose or needs to win, Punk put, has put over Darby multiple times. Throughout this entire build of this match. Darby loses nothing here. You guys forget Darby lost to Cody Rhodes at the beginning of 2020, uh, 2020 last year. Look where he is now. He wrestled CM Punk. Darby Allen will be fine. CM Punk will be fine. CM Punk will, may, will have to, is going to... I wouldn't beat CM Punk for a while either. Punk should win a, a few more matches... Um. Uh, I think his next feud, if I'm booking it, should be with MJF. But I've heard that he wants to do something with the Young Bucks. So if you want to have the Young Bucks take on Brian Danielson and CM Punk at the Arthur Ashe Show, you know, we'll get to him. Oh boy, we're gonna get to him. What we're not gonna get to is Paul White versus QT Marshall. Choke slam. One, two, three. Move on. QT Marshall. Get the fuck off my screen. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs> they did also announce the uh, the next day, the next day, uh, the next pay per view, which is Full Gear, which was originally supposed to be for uh, November seventh. That was moved up a date. All right, that was moved back a date. Um, or no, it was actually for no, was it November? Yeah, it was for number six, November 6th on a Sunday, but now it's being held on a Saturday, back on, back to Saturday, November 13th. Um, they, apparently it's going to be possibly to avoid competition with the UFC. Um, I don't know if it's going to be still in St. Louis, uh, but at the, right now it still is, but the, but the date is now November 13th for full gear. So that should be good. 
match I didn't really uh, care too much about because I, I saw it three weeks ago. It was great on, on Rampage, but uh, we had the main event, AEW World Title, the cleaner Kenny Omega defending against the Impact World Champion Christian Cage. Uh, again, this was supposed to be this was already been confirmed by multiple sources and people. I think AEW has confirmed this as well. It was supposed to be Hangman Page versus Kenny Omega, but uh, Hangman asked for time off. Um, so his wife is going to have a baby apparently. So uh, hopefully, when Hangman comes back, he'll get that title. I'm hoping Arthur Ashe. That's my guess. If not, uh, Full Gear is where I would do that at. This is an okay match. I didn't really care about the referee's stupidity here. Um, the second table spot pissed me off because the referee clearly saw the table spot and did nothing to it. I did nothing about it. Match was all right. It was nothing to write home about. The crowd even didn't seem to care too much about it. Um, favorite spot of the night of that match, one doing good angel from the top rope. See, see you later, Christian Cage. Go bye bye to the back of the line. Then, this is when the juicy stuff happens. <laughs> so, uh, the elite comes out, beats the hell out of Christian Cage. Out comes the Jurassic Express. They get the hell beat out of each other. Then, Kenny Omega. If I can. Kenny Omega talks. Where is it? Let me see. Okay, so Okay, so here's what here's what I, I loved I loved Kenny's uh promo here. He says, Are you starting to understand Chicago? I don't care where you came from. No one is on my level. The only people on my uh, that ever have a chance to beat me are retired. I thought so it is retired. I thought it was tired. Are either retired or they're already dead. Life's go out. I'm like What's going to happen here? Is this Brian Danielson? No. Out comes fucking Adam Cole. <laughs> Adam Cole comes walking out here with better music, by the way. Not that I didn't hate his WWE post AU Undisputed Era theme song. I didn't hate it. I didn't I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it. But, but it's either here or there. Adam Cole fucking comes out to the shock of her. Well, not actually, not really. Shock. It was shocked this soon, is what I understood. Uh, that's my thing. I'm like, there's no way. He was one of the guys I wasn't so sure if he was going to come or not because I was like, oh, I know he wants to keep his Twitch, but he seemed like a WWE lifer. Glad I was proven wrong here. Adam Cole comes out. The uh, the rest of the elite are fucking just just. Out of their mind, shocked. Adam Cole comes to the ring, does the Adam Cole baby thing, and he looks at them and's like, "You know what you did to me?" Because if you had in reference to, if you guys don't know, if you didn't follow the Elite before Adam Cole came to WWE, uh, they wrote him off the Elite by by killing. They they murdered Adam Cole by poisoning him. I believe it was a, a thing that was inspired by Cody Rhodes. Actually, you know what? I think that's who Adam Cole should feud with coming into AEW. Not members of the, Adam Cole should be taking on on Cody Rhodes because Cody Rhodes is the one who who conspired to kill him. There it is. There, that's actually that actually makes perfect sense. Anyways, so so then Jungle Bug gets up, bam, super kick. I'm like, oh, this is a good turn to heal. Okay. <laughs> So he rejoins the elite. Um, then he's like, um, Omega's like, oh, you really think he's one of our best friends? So he's like, who's ready for story time with Adam Cole, baby? Is what Adam Cole said. And Adam Cole said, uh, Cole said, uh, uh, it's official. It, it's official. The elite are, is the greatest faction in wrestling today. And then, then, uh, and then Kenny said, I must send the crown, Hopi. Without further ado, I must send you adieu. And then, then Brian Daniels' music hits, not um, uh, Europe's final countdown. We'll explain why uh, that didn't happen. 
Uh, I actually have news on that, finally. So I do actually have news of why they didn't get the final countdown. But Flight of the Valkyries plays. Brian Danielson comes out with a man bun. Brian Danielson, lose, the people loses their shit. So, so Brian Danielson comes out, starts hitting, you know, sides with the the, the, the baby faces. They start beating up the elite. Kenny Omega just flees. Uh, and Brian is hitting the yes kicks. The, the, um, they look vicious, by the way. These yes kicks look vicious on, I believe, it was Nick Jackson. And then he hit one of his, one of his, oh, I love when he hits those damn German suplexes. American Dragon suplex. I love it. Um, American Dragon is back. He's in AEW. Adam Cole Bebe is back. Or he's in AEW. Uh, Minoru Suzuki is not with AEW, but he's in AEW to, for a little bit to do some stuff with John Moxley. Ruby Soho is in AEW. CM Punk is in AEW. And I put this tweet out the other day, um, and I can't remember if I still have it up. I'm going to look that up right now, but I'm not so sure if I, I'm not sure if I still have this, this tweet up. I probably don't. Yeah, I, I probably don't. Uh, my, my tweet was, just let this sink in. In 2021, we have a wrestling company that has Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, and CM Punk in it. 2021 is weird. What the fuck is happening? And it's and it's crazy. Uh, so after, after All Out, which was, and they closed the show, Brian Danielson, I'll... I will look for Brian Danielson's uh, post. Uh, I want. I want to see if I can find Brian Danielson's. Um, uh, off air. Let's see if I can. I'm wondering if I can find off air. Okay, so I'll I'll read off the I'll read off of this here. So basically, all Brian Daniels was basically said there are people around here that who call themselves the elite. I'm gonna, I'm here to see if, I, if they truly are. It's like AEW, let's fucking go. Is basically, he basically just said he he still loves, he loved, he still loves WWE. He enjoyed working there, but he had to he had to leave. So, and so it's pretty fun to see this here. So, let's see, Adam Cole. I don't know how long he's with AEW. He said that was it was a shock to him because the whole contract stuff with him. Uh, he signed an extension to finish that story with Adam with the Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, so that he did that, and he was a free agent, and then he went to AEW. <laughs> there's that. Uh, reason why he couldn't get the final countdown. Here's a here's a very interesting. Uh, people were wondering, well, why didn't he debut with Europe's final countdown? Well, according to Wrestling Observer Live. Um, there wasn't, here it is, the, the quote is, quote, there was in fact an, uh, an attempt to, for him to come out the final countdown, uh, figuring the place would, would explode, which they, which they did anyway, but it was, even for Tony Khan, cost prohibitive, prohibitive, um, so his, so one of his friends, Daniel Bryan's friends, made him a new remix and they think in time the song would be just fine. So that was that's why. Um, here's a so let's let's read some of the stuff of Adam Cole's um, decisions here. So he said it was a fairly easy decision. Um, like he enjoyed his four years with because he was a, not, well, he was an under he was working with Triple H. That's why he enjoyed his four years. Um, he said it's not one well, knock on whatsoever in WWE. Um, but he, but he was been, he's been at AEW shows supporting Brit, but he was hanging out with the crew. Basically, he's just he's just glad to be somewhere else now. It seems like. Um, so I'm excited that Adam Cole is here. I'm excited that Brian Danielson is in AEW. The possible dream matches here with with Brian and Cole and Punk and like I mean we can have we can have Brian Danielson versus uh, Kenny Omega. Brian Danielson versus Malachi Black. CM Punk, Malachi Black, CM Punk, uh, 
Adam Cole, CM Punk, Kenny Omega. Adam Cole versus C, uh, Kenny Omega. Adam Cole. Uh, we can run Alan, Adam Cole and Malachi Black back. We can run uh, Adam Cole versus Brian Danielson back. Uh, I loved their, their match they had on SmackDown a few years ago. Uh, so, but, um, yeah, that was AEW. That was AEW's All Out. That was my review of AEW All Out. I really enjoyed this show. This is one of my favorite shows of the year. It actually is my favorite show of the year. I'm. This is this show is why when somebody asked me why do you like pro wrestling? What is it about pro wrestling that it appears to you, appeals to you? And I said, and I would tell them, this show right here is why I'm. I love pro wrestling. This is why I'm a fan of this. This is why I'm. This is why I grew up a wrestling fan. This is like. And this is like an in, like this is a wrestling fan's wet dream here. All everyone like this forbidden door here with New Japan and and Impact and and uh, AAA and and well, they're not doing Ring of Honor right now. They may not do Ring of Honor, but but you know they're working with other companies and they're working in WA. They did some they in AEW let some in uh, other talent go to in the NWA show they had. Uh, Layla Hirsch go uh, compete for the NWA Championship, the a women's title. They had um, Red Velvet and shit. Who was who was the woman that was with her? Fuck. Who was it? Who the hell was it that? Who the hell was it that? NW in. Uh, let me look this up. NWA. Empower. It was on the Empower show. I'm trying to remember who the fuck, who the fuck it was. Layla, uh, K- Kayleen King. That's who it was. I couldn't remember that. I couldn't remember her name. Um, that happened. You know. I'm I'm excited. Diamante was on was on, um, AEW was on the Empower show. You know, so like some good shit. Some wrestling is great again. If you're not WWE, like NXT is, it's dead. NXT is this tonight. When I'm recording this tonight, it's the final night of Triple H's NXT. Next week is the start of Vince McMahon's NXT, and I don't want, I don't, I don't care about it. He's ruined NXT. He, he's Karen Cross looks like a looks like a cross dresser. Fucking. DM the fucking BDSM shit. Um, I don't know where Scarlet is. He took the woman. Took his took the woman from her from him. That's part of his act. He feels naked without Scarlet. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm working. See, I I'm happy to talk about AEW. Uh, I will. I'm gonna review Dynamite uh, this week. So I'm excited for that. If I may review NXT this week on on the on the uh, this weekend on the pod, podcast, um, this is actually making up for the last few weeks of I, I missed. Um, so, so I I loved Punk's debut at, at Rampage. I loved what he did. His, he had a great promo. Uh, uh, one of the best stuff that he's done. And I'm excited. I'm really excited for what's to come with AEW. Uh, there's, I don't think pickups are going to finish because there's, there's a good chance Bray Wyatt shows up in AEW. I, as uh, he's probably going to go as Wyndham, Wyndham. He, I, you know what? Oh, excuse me. He actually, I'm going to say it right now. He's going to, may actually, I know they've said in the past that, that they don't want a new leader of the Dark Order, but there's only one guy who can, I think, if not Hangman Page. I think there's one man who can actually pull the Dark Order together. That's Bray Wyatt. Um, oh, and then Buddy Matthews. I hope he comes in. I want him to feud with Malachi Black. I need that match in my veins. So, yeah. So that was my all-out review. I am at the Misfit. Hope you guys enjoyed my review of AEW's All Out 2021. Uh, like I said, you can follow me on all my social medias. Subscribe. 
Please give me a like, comment down below if you like the show. And I will see you guys this weekend for AW coverage. I'm I love I love pro wrestling. Peace out.